Here's a quick video showing uh, the LaserCAD software which comes with the DSP controller upgrade from LightObject.com uh, which I used to upgrade my K40 laser system from China. Uh, the original controller board and software that comes with the K40 is pretty much garbage. Um, also if you ever want to cut anything out and not just engrave with this machine, uh, the DSP controller upgrade is the smartest idea in my in my book. Now I did spend more on the uh, upgrade than I did on the whole machine, but it basically makes this laser machine a working laser. Uh, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of two to three thousand dollars for the next size up, where you actually get a DSP controller. You know, this machine with all the upgrades probably comes out to be about eleven hundred dollars, which I think is well worth it for its capabilities uh, after it's done. Um, Besides the DSP controller upgrade, I upgraded all of my mirrors, uh, so they're all gold, uh, gold-plated mirrors. Uh, upgraded the uh, focal lens, and I upgraded the air assist system using a Harbor Freight um, uh, airbrush compressor, which you can see back here. Um, very, very quiet, which is what I really wanted. If you listen when I turn it on, you barely hear it. The other important thing about a laser system is you want to make sure you have an adequate exhaust system to pull the fumes out. Uh, what I'm using currently, as you can see, this tube hose hooked up to my rigid shop vac, and the exhaust from the rigid is being piped out through a window in my basement. Uh, here you can see the DSP controller and a mess of wires inside. Uh, controller. There's three stepper controllers, two for the X and Y axis and one for the Z, -ax table, Z axis table, which I also upgraded, uh, as you can see here. Right. See there. Nice smooth operation. you can see this but I have these lines marked out on some painters tape uh, what I did was I let the laser run over the tape it's giving me basically some coordinates on the table here so I can position my work in the area where and that also helps with aligning in the laser cat software so enough about the machine put the camera down and we're going to go over to the software All right, here we have the LaserCAD software. Uh, this is going to be my work area here. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to create a 75 by 75 millimeter uh, working area for a piece of plywood that I'm going to engrave on. Here's my piece of wood, as you can see, just a piece of scrap almost comes from the uh, craft store. Very cheap, very easy way to create small projects. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it here along the X and Y. Right. So the coordinates on my table are going to match in the software. I'm 10 millimeters over on the right and 30 millimeters from the top down. So back over to the software. Now when you're engraving and you're going to take a picture off the internet and you're going to use that for an engraving, uh, what you can do is you're going to download the picture you want first, import it into the software, and then scale it to the size of your working material. So go to Google, search for an image, We'll go to Google Images. Now, using black and white photos is probably the best way to create the best um, engraving. So I'm going to change my search tools here, color, black and white. Right? And then if you, you hover over these, they'll give you an approximate size of the image. I like this one right here. It's 600 by 700. Right click and save it. Right. Now that it's saved, I'm going to go to File, 
import and go to the image open it okay first thing I'll do is I will scale the image to match the size of my material what I'll usually do is since this is a square piece of material uh, I'm only going to change one one of the dimensions whichever one is larger and I'm going to click this little box here and it's going to proportionally scale it so let's make this one 75 and press enter alright so this will now fit in my material the next thing I need to do is move this to match the area that my material is in so I know that it's uh, 75 by 75 so first I'm going to find out what half of that is because these coordinates here match the middle of your picture so I need to get the middle of the object so 75 divided by 2 37.5 so I am on my x-axis I am 10 millimeters positive so I need to add 10 to my 37.5 so it's 47.5 and I need to add 30 to 37.5 which will give me 67.5 and now I am 30 millimeters down and 10 millimeters over. Now because and that's and my, the middle of my engraving will be there. So what I need to do now is that looks good. We can simulate what it'll look like after the engraving's done. It gives you an idea of you know where the laser is going to hit the material, and we can also estimate the work time. One minute and 10 seconds that this should take to fully engrave. So next thing I'm going to do is go over to my layer options and already since it's a picture and there hasn't been any lines created it's already set to engrave but we can double click and open this up uh, number of passes for an engraving is going to be one my speed is okay at 400 but I'm need, going to need to bring my laser power down quite a bit um, for this you know very thin material so I think about 25 percent will be good Okay, and then I'll click OK, and now we need to send it to the controller where it will be stored. So what we'll do is we'll download. Now if you wanted to, you could actually run the job from here by clicking Start, and it would run it. But I like to have it on the box first, because I like to run the job without the laser on first to see where my lasers should be hitting and if I'm going to be you know, in the area of my material. So I'm going to change the name of the file to test chive okay and I'm gonna send it to the machine when I send it we're gonna hear a little beep which means that it's received it okay so everything's done now from the laser cat end now I'm gonna go over to the machine and show you how to test test fire the job Okay. so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my laser and I have a little kill switch here Okay, when this is not engaged, the laser will not fire. If I move my laser here to the material and I press the laser button, I can see that it's not going to fire any laser. Right? So what I can do now is file 20, it will automatically load the job that you created. So right now it's on file 20 and if I want to test to see what it will look like, I just press the start button and it will basically mimic my job will look like before I start. Okay, everything looks good. I'm going to stop it and escape. All right, I turn my laser on. Uh, my water pump is already running. It runs, starts with the machine, so I know I have water in my laser tube. I'm going to turn on my air assist. All right, and I'm also going to turn on my exhaust system. Probably won't be able to hear me very well after this, so I'm just going to start the job after this. All right, this is great. I forgot one very important step. And as you can tell by looking at this, this does not look very good. Reason being is my focal length was not set. All right, so that's one thing I forgot to do, but this is a good time to show you that I can do that. I'm gonna put the camera down so you can see. Okay. 
Now this piece of wood here I created is the exact focal length of my um, lens here inside here. So what I need to do is move the table up to the distance of my material, which I'll do right now. This is where a Z table comes in very handy. Without it, you'd be putting material underneath and it would be very difficult to finally get your focal length. All right. So what I'm going to do is just turn the material a little differently so we get a fresh cut here, fresh engraving. All right. And we're going to start it over again. I'm going to turn on my air assist. Turn on my exhaust. see the difference between my original cut which was not focused and the new engraving here so not bad all in all the software is fairly easy to use once you start using it there's really no instruction manual so you kind of have to just mess around you know find different settings and stuff but you know I thought it was pretty easy all right thanks for watching